Hey viewers of Public Access, my name is Dave McWilliams. I'm the host of today's show and I'm also a town resident. And one of the reasons that we got uh, the museum people in here is to talk about the museum article which is on the town ballot. And to the far left is Mr. Charlie Moore, who I've known for a long time. And uh, Alex Lenny is the executive director Correct. of the museum. One of the reasons that we asked him to come in is basically on the town meeting day, there's an article, which is Article 8. Could you talk about that? And uh, uh, I'd like to get your views. Sure. Um, is it okay if I start a little bit about the museum? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, for those who may not be familiar, uh, the St. Albans Historical Society was started in 1966. Um, first members met in people's homes. They exchanged uh, notes about their travel. They did lectures and those sorts of things. Um, it was a small group. Um, when the Church Street School closed and all the neighborhood schools closed for the consolidation, uh, the building became uh, vacant and uh, then became property of the museum. So in 1971, the Franklin County Museum opened. Uh, we've gone through a couple rebranding since then. We're now the St. Albans Museum. Uh, we're open seasonally because the building's only partially heated. Uh, so you'll see us uh, from about June through October uh, with the exhibits open for people to come visit. And then uh, we do have a third floor event space that we do private rentals and also programs throughout the year. Uh, we have one uh, full-time employee, which is myself, and about 35 volunteers uh, who make everything happen. And we're really committed to this mission of um, telling the story of St. Albans, the story of Franklin County, and the story of Northwestern Vermont. So uh, each season, we have uh, historical exhibitions that we update ourselves uh, that you can come visit. We do programming both in our building and out in the community. We partner with local schools. Uh, we host special events and fundraisers and those sorts of things. Uh, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit, which means we're entirely responsible for raising funds every year, both to operate the museum, to take care of the building, uh, and to you know, be out in the community sort of serving our mission of preserving community history. Um, to give you a sense of why we're coming to the voters for Article 8 that uh, you referenced uh, this town meeting day, it's really about reaching out and uh, looking to a sustainable future. Um, I'm sure Charlie can share more about this. Um, uh, we are embarked on a 10-year strategic plan called Vision 2027 that we started a couple years ago. And the basic idea was to look at the museum. Uh, we had just celebrated our 50th anniversary. And it was to uh, really uh, understand our financial picture, what sustainability meant, and how we could ensure that we were going to be around for future generations. And the trend line that we noticed um, is that we were constantly you know, coming up short of our sustainable financial goals on an annual basis. So we had reached... Uh, out in the past to members for support, um, one-time donations from friends of the museum. Uh, someone could come in and write a check, uh, and we would balance the books for the year. And as we're sort of approaching our, our second generation uh, and third generation of members and supporters, we're just recognizing that with the increased costs of programming, the increased costs of the building, insurance, and those sorts of things, that we're just not able to keep up on our own, despite the fact that we've increased our fundraising efforts. So uh, we went to the city and the town, um, who had given us a level of support and we're asking uh, for an additional amount of funding which will help us be sustainable um, for now and hopefully generations to come. So Article 8 specifically asks for the voters of the town of St. Albans uh, to authorize the select board to contribute $15,000 a year to the museum for a period of five years. Let's have a little input from Charlie. I don't want him to fall asleep over this. <laughs> no, I think Alex has hit that nail on the head and... Uh, uh, this is so important for us and our future of the museum. Uh, the city has already uh, made uh, a commitment uh, for their 15000 uh, uh, a year for the next five years. Um, so we're, we're seeking the voters uh, to vote yes on Article 8. Now, the city put it in their budget automatically, am I right? Yeah, that's correct. The town of St. Albans has put it down as an Article 8 because they wanted to have the, the input from the voters of the town of St. Albans. That's, that's correct. Yeah. I think a lot of people that have lived here all their life, you know, will support that article. You know, I do support it because of the fact, you know, it's a St. Albans area. It's not St. Albans, it's because the museum's in the city. They were, you know, people, you know, don't, shouldn't feel that you know, because it's in the city, it doesn't affect the town. It affects everybody in the St. Albans town, town area and oh, St. Albans area. I should say it because it's both city and town. You know, uh, there's a lot of history here, and you know the library. Uh, you know, and the, the library 
you know, gets money uh, automatically put into their budget, so why shouldn't we take care of the museum? $15,000 is not a lot of money. That way, you know, it's going to help you guys for at least five years, and then you can either come back to the voters or whether the slug board will keep it in there as a regular budget item. You're exactly, exactly right. And like Alex said, it's not um, uh, a case where we don't um, seek other ways <coughs> to increase our, our funding. Uh, we're getting ready for our big fundraiser, the Calcutta, in May. Uh, we'll be putting out something on it shortly. Um, but we've come up with some new fundraisers as well. So. Could you talk about some of the exhibits that you've got up there at the museum? A lot of people don't aren't aware that you're, you're, you've got some more new exhibits up there that they might want to see as soon as you guys open up. You know, that's a great question. Uh, the first thing I talk about when I uh, introduce myself <coughs> and say I'm with the museum or I meet somebody uh, in passing or uh, out in the community and they ask about the museum and what we do is I always encourage them to come visit. And a lot of times I'll hear, well, I did see the museum. I went there when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, as a student, or my own kids went there on a field trip, or I was there a few years ago, why would I want to come back? And I always encourage them uh, to make another visit because we are committed to changing exhibits each year. Uh, so the museum has two floors of exhibit rooms, the old classrooms uh, in our building, and there are some semi-permanent exhibits. Uh, you can always come and see a room dedicated to the Smith family, who were politicians, philanthropists, entrepreneurs uh, here in St. Albans. Railroaders. Railroaders, exactly. Um, Charlie won't let me forget to talk about that in just a minute. Uh, there's a room dedicated to local medical history. Um, there's a room that is uh, dedicated to, you know, telling the story of the building as a historic classroom. And those are always there. But we do make a commitment every year, uh, myself as a staff member and with the wonderful support of my volunteers, to change out the exhibits or to update them. Two years ago, we completely renovated an exhibit room. Uh, and turned it into uh, what's known as the Women's Realm. This is our Women's History Exhibit. It won an award from the Vermont Historical Society. Mm. Last year, we completely renovated an exhibit room and installed Farming Franklin County, which is an exhibit all about the agricultural heritage uh, of our community, maple, dairy, um, farm life, agricultural businesses, those sorts of things. Uh, and what was great about Farming Franklin County in particular is that it was uh, funded through sponsorships and over 60 farming families, individuals, organizations, and local businesses donated materials. Uh, stories or memories from their family, pictures, old farm implements, um, those sorts of things. Uh, this year we're working on uh, a couple of new exhibits. Uh, one is dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the St. Albans Co-op. We're also recognizing the 100th anniversary of the American Legion that's taking place this year. Uh, we have What's New at the Museum, which as you can imagine by the title, <laughs> every year we rotate out new and interesting artifacts that come in that are donated. And we're also working on uh, an exhibit that's sort of dedicated to the Band of Brothers. So if you're familiar with the 101st Airborne Division in World War II, they were involved in some of the most significant actions of the war. Um, four service members were from St. Albans. So we've connected with their uh, two of them, uh, and as well as the families of the others, to try to tell that story and to share that bit of history that has you know, a national conversation around yeah. it that has a connection right here in our own backyard. Now those are just the exhibits that we kind of manage and take care of. We also bring in traveling or loaned exhibits. Uh, so again, a few years ago we had Hamilton, uh, which was an exhibit all about Alexander Hamilton. We had a, a lecture about the connections between the musical, of course, which is a kind of a cultural conversation right now, and the history. Uh, this year we're working on uh, two uh, potentially. One is about, uh, it's called Seeds of Renewal. It's a, a loan from the Vermont Historical Society, which is about Abenaki history and heritage. Uh, and the other is coming to us from the Vermont Folk Life Center, which deals about, again, kind of farming and hill farms uh, in Vermont. So, um, you know, to answer your question, there's always something new to see. Um, we're always adding, updating, changing exhibits each year. And we definitely want people to know that uh, we're a vibrant organization and a place where you can come back bring your family when they're visiting, bring your friends, bring your, uh, your kids. It's a great place really for anyone of any age to come and learn. I th you know, I haven't been there in two years, but I gotta bring my grandson because my grandson's at the age where he's gotta realize what the history is in this area. And uh, I will make it a point to bring him this year because I wanna see, I also understand, I've been talking to some of your board members <coughs> that are volunteer, 
that you've got a little article on the old Worthmore Feed Company. Absolutely. Yeah. Part of our uh, Farming yeah. Franklin County exhibit yeah. has a section uh, on Worthmore, exactly, which is a story, again, that we wouldn't have been able to tell entirely on our own. It was community members who brought us information, who brought us artifacts and old signs and things that really made the exhibit stand out, I think. There was a woman that asked me uh, if I had anything, because my father used to work down there. He used to, they used to call him Firebug, <clears throat> and he worked down there, and what he did, how he got the name Firebug, he liked to smoke cigarette, <clears throat> so he wanted to have a cigarette, so he went out in one of the boxcars and <laughs> caught the boxcar on fire. That's why they call him Firebug. Never lived it down, <laughs> wow. <clears throat> But him and a lot of, I did a report way back, probably, geez, probably 58 years ago <coughs> on the Worthmore and stuff like that for a class report, you know, and they, you know, that was quite a historic place. You had a one-man lift that used to take you up, you had to hold on the bar and you had a foot stand and you go up between the floors and stuff like that. <coughs> and uh, that was quite a place, you know, that was part of the history of the St. Albans uh, area, you know, because they employed so many people. And I think what's great is you just illustrated what our mission is and what our, our role is. You know, we're, uh, we're stewards. You know, the purpose of the museum is for us to sit down with residents like yourself and say, tell us those stories, give us that information that nobody else has but you so that we can make sure it's preserved because it tells us a lot about where we came from, which, you know, we like to think helps us understand where we're going. One of the things I've done, you know, in the past year or so is I went and interviewed people like George Costas. What a memory on that guy, you know, and uh, the history of when he came into the St. Albans area, you know, being a judge and all that stuff. And his wife and him thanked me very much for doing that interview because poor George now is in a nursing home. You know, uh, so I, th I think we need to capture all the history of people that grew up in this area so that we can have something for the produced for the future for the museum or a library and stuff like that, you know, because... You know, once they're gone, you can't get that information anymore. Absolutely. That's one of the things that we're doing for, with the um, railroad exhibit is interviewing uh, old railroaders, old-time railroaders, and former employees in all the different crafts and so forth. So that's uh, going to be a have good... Have you started that yet? I know Sally Liner, you know, asked me if I'd be willing to do some interviews. I said... Sure, 100%. You know, the, the railroad is part of my family history, you know, my, my uncles and stuff like that. And I says, uh, we need to capture that. So if I can help you in any way, I'd be more than willing to. We're just gonna getting ready to announce that this spring. So certainly uh, you or any <coughs> member of the community who has a connection to the rail city in that way, Charlie and I would love to have a conversation yeah. with. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. what do you see for the future of 2019 and 20? <clears throat> um, continuing to develop programming. Yeah. So uh, this rail city history project, the first component that we're working on uh, this year is oral history. Next year, we're gonna be focused on um, renovating the exhibit space and putting in new artifacts and really uh, taking some time to expand that room. We're also working on uh, next year, will be the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. So that'll be a display we're working on. Um, I do wanna talk about our uh, STEM programming, but I thought I'd ask Charlie maybe to chime in about why we're such an important place for students. Well, you know, I've, I've been involved with the museum for as long as I've been here, 18 years, and and we just have so many different facets and, and interesting things going on. But our educational program, Alex just finished a presentation uh, this summer at the Bay, uh, which was very well received. Uh, so we got a lot of great things going on for kids and uh, families and, and our entire community. The Bay Program I wanted to mention in particular, and I'm glad Charlie brought that up. Uh, so Sam piloted a new educational program this past year called Lake Lessons. The idea was uh, to kind of figure out how we could bridge cultural heritage or history with uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, so STEM or STEAM. Um, because too often, you know, those sort of operate in separate silos. So we were able to secure some uh, private grant funding, and we reached out and we partnered with two state agencies and three local nonprofits for a pilot program. We invited over 500 students and educators from St. Albans Town School, uh, Georgia Elementary School, and St. Albans City School to come to a series of place-based, hands-on workshops. Mm -hmm. 
so we were down, uh, for example, at Bay Park in St. Albans at the Stone Bathhouse, which was constructed in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. And we walked these students through a series of stations where they got to learn about the ecology of the lake. They got to learn about the watershed cycle. They got to learn about St. Albans Bay, uh, which at one time was Port Washington. It was a working waterfront. Ships were built there. In fact, the very first sailing canal boat to go from Vermont to New York City through the canal system came right out of St. Albans. <coughs> that was the Gleaner. Um, there was a time when um, you know, the recreational and economic opportunities at the bay itself rivaled the waterfront in downtown Burlington. So there's this rich history there that you might not be aware of if it wasn't something you studied. So we felt so privileged to be able to uh, reach out to these schools to invite these students down for free because, again, we were able to secure grant funding um, and to kind of walk them through during this half day these wonderful stories about uh, the St. Almonds Bay, about Lake Champlain, not only the history, but how we can keep it healthy and safe for future generations. And in every group, I had students who said to me, I've you know, lived here all my life and I've never been here. Or I've been down to the bay and I didn't know what this was. So it was a really great eye-opening moment for us um, to be able to sort of reach out in the community outside of the walls of the museum, to go out into the community and really have an educational impact for our young people. Uh, and to make it easy for the teachers you know, to say yes and to help them integrate it <laughs> into their curriculum and things they were already yeah. doing in the classroom. Well, the town of St. Albans wants that park used as much as they can. You know, uh, Alan Mashter has done a wonderful job in that town park, putting in walkways, and he's trying to get some of the building, you know, windows repaired and stuff like that, and electrical. So it's a wonderful park, and as you said, it was done by the SCC, so... CCC, yeah. CCC. 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 <coughs> and uh, it was a lot of people put a lot of work into that place. You know, and we need to save that because it's history also. And that's part of our message, that our class, you know, our local history, the classrooms, if you will, that we can kind of teach about our local history in, it's not just the museum building. And in the past two years, I've worked with uh, about 10 different area educational organizations and schools, going into classrooms, going into buildings, uh, and bringing our sort of mobile museum with me uh, to work with those students where they're at in their own classrooms uh, here in St. Albans and out in Franklin County. Um, so we really want people to know that, you know, we do serve this sort of greater story in this greater community. Does the museum have a website and a telephone so if anybody wants to call and uh, ask any questions? Absolutely. So you can find us online. It's www.stamuseum.org, stamuseum.org. Our phone number is 527-7933. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's good because that's the way of the future. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm the animal control officer for two towns, St. Albans Town in Georgia. And pictures I put on there, let me tell you, you know, it's, it's wonderful how many people actually use Facebook, Twitter, and those other accounts because, you know, uh, a lot of animals that people lose, you know, they put them on there and they automatically within a couple of days get their, an their lost animal back. So, it's great. you know, it's good to have websites <coughs> for any organization that helps you. And we're really hoping that people see this uh, Article 8 as an invitation. So, of course, we're coming to the community and asking for their support. What we're really doing is asking them to invest invest in our mission, invest in the sustainability of our community history, and we're asking them to come partner with us, come visit the museum, attend one of our programs, uh, share your memories, share your family history, be a part of one of our um, community history projects and get involved. That's what we're really looking for. Of course, the financing is an important piece that makes it all happen, but it's really an open invitation for those who haven't been involved with the museum before to really find a way, uh, if they're able to, to come see us and what we're all about. I hope the town voters, being a town resident myself, I'm going to vote for this because I believe in it. You know, that we need to preserve our future, you know, with the history of what the museum does for the St. Albans area. Now, if anybody's got anything they want to donate, pictures or, um, you know, artifacts and stuff like that, do you accept those? We do. Um, we're taking in donations uh, throughout the year. So the same contact information, send us an email, give us a call, send us a message through social media. Uh, we'll set up a time for myself or one of our volunteers to meet with you and have a conversation about how we can help preserve that piece of local history. One of the things I do see in the messenger, and thank God they do it, I hope they don't charge you for it, is you, they get pictures of, from the museum and they put them in the paper. Yeah, <coughs> that that's is a very service good. they offer us, and it's one of our, our favorite ways to connect with the community. Yeah. There are some weeks 
the most phone calls or messages I get are about our weekly photo feature <coughs> in the Messenger, yeah. which you can also see on their website and on the Facebook page for both the newspaper and the museum. I hate to say it way back when I was a young kid, I did go to Church Street School. <laughs> 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 way back yeah, when Mrs. Cattell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was a beautiful teacher, you know. And we have our story. You can come see uh, the, the Cattell classroom exhibit. I think I saw that two years ago, but I've got to get back up there, you know, uh, because it's such a wonderful you know, museum, and we need to support it. You know, the St. Albans Town voters need to vote for this because it's for their future, their children's future. And if we don't do it, then we're going to lose all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Charlie, if I missed anything, I know you would correct me if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you've hit the, uh, the nail on the, on the head. Um, you know, we encourage the voters to vote yes for Article 8. Uh, it's... Uh, going to preserve our future, uh, the future of the museum uh, for the community. Uh, and another way to support us is to uh, attend our Calcutta. Uh, our plan is to have uh, Vermont Tech uh, 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 do the catering this year with the students who make the food. We, they've done it a couple years, and it's been really, really, really good. Have you set the date for the year Calcutta? Well, we... Uh, or you'll be coming out in the next month or so. Yeah, we hope it's on May the 18th, uh, but we've got a meeting scheduled to finalize the date and make sure the caterer and everybody's available by then. So, yeah, vote yes. Vote yes. Vote yes. You know, I keep, agree with you 100%. Help us keep the doors open. We are uh, uh, want that to happen. Yeah. I mean, Charlie's right. It's really about sustainability. Um, it's about ensuring that we have a solid footing for the future. Um, we do rely on you know, the support of our members and friends in the community to operate. Now, there are times where we're fortunate to have uh, very generous support. One of the most exciting artifacts that came to us in 2018 uh, was the ceremonial saber that belonged to Captain George Conger, uh, who was a veteran and hero of the Civil War and, of course, a hero of the St. Albans Raid and who led kind of the posse response to, to capture the Confederate raiders who robbed banks in St. Albans in 1864. The only reason we were able to acquire that sword is that private donors made specific restricted contributions so that that sword could be purchased on behalf of the museum. Um, it wasn't something that we would have ever been able to go out and get on our own. So we do have projects uh, where we do have donors come in and support us, but looking at the trend lines, we just see that there's a bit of a sustainability gap, and a yes vote is gonna help us close that and ensure in the future that we're able to maintain operations so that we can continue to share these stories and preserve them uh, with and for the community. It's just like, uh, you know, the university's got a museum down there, you know, that's why we need to preserve ours up here because they preserve theirs by uh, probably private funding and plus funding from the city of Burlington, but. You know, this is a smaller town, you know, St. Albans City and St. Albans Town, they're only population probably 14, 15,000 people. So, you know, uh, if you want to put your money to good use, vote on Article 8, support it. That way it'll be in the budget for five years, and then, you know, uh, we'll have some new select board people on there, and then we'll probably, you know, uh, we'll give you the funding for the future. Oh, we're definitely going to, you know, continue to find ways to, to achieve that sustainability. And, you know, the way you kind of talked just now about the importance of the museum, and Charlie and I talk about this all the time, <clears throat> how uh, incredibly unique the story of St. Albans is. Um, imagine, you know, the Civil War, the northernmost land action here in St. Albans, you know, the story of uh, governors and, and congresspeople from St. Albans, you know, the contributions we made to the lake and the history of the lake or the story of local agriculture and, and forestry. Um, you know, for we pride ourselves, I think, on being a small, close-knit community, but I, th I would argue that we have this outsized contribution. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we were the maple syrup capital, the butter capital, the dairy capital, mm -hmm. the story of New England, uh, the story of Vermont, and the story of northwestern Vermont all have really strong connections to St. Albans, and it's really our goal to kind of make sure Absolutely. that we're preserving those. Yeah. Oh, Alex, I want you to give them a website and your telephone number again because we did a little while ago, but I want to make sure people... Got it, so that in case they got any question. Absolutely, so you can visit us online, www.stamuseum.org, uh, or you can give us a call, 802-527-7933, or find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. 
And uh, are you keeping Charlie out of trouble? <laughs> Charlie keeps us he, out of trouble. Yeah, that's a full-time <laughs> job. <laughs> you know, that's uh, maybe one last thing to say is just how grateful I am. Uh, you know, as the only staff member, I could never uh, achieve uh, some of the accomplishments that we've been able to pull together in the last few years if it wasn't for a dedicated uh, group of volunteers, including the Board of Trustees. We're so fortunate to have some really amazing uh, people from uh, throughout our community who give their time, talents, and energy to making the museum a special place. Yeah. It is special. It's a historic building, and uh, all historic items that are in there for the museum, we need to preserve it because Church Street, you know, uh, is one of the main areas where the buildings probably were built in the same era or within a couple years of each other. One of the things, you know, I'd like to see, and I know Charlie will, will help me on this, is uh, I'd like to see a trolley car come back to St. Albans and go down through Main Street and down Lake Street because he used to, at one time, have a trolley car. That's what I understand. It, it went all the way down to the lake at that's one right. time, didn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Well, we're not going to go that far, but that's my <laughs> other project I'm working on is, is to establish a commuter rail. We call it community rail. Um, uh, service from St. Albans to uh, Essex Junction. We'd like to concentrate because that's a huge amount of people that get on uh, interstate at exit 19 uh, every day, uh, uh, work with uh, global foundries, uh, and then we'd like to extend it on to Montreal and, and Burlington. But we'd like to start up here first. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea, Charlie, and I, I do support that. You know, you know, we need to get cars off the streets, get people into using mass transit, because right now there's so many thousands of uh, truck drivers that they need to replace. If we use mass rail, and you know, it'll save a lot of uh, carbon not going into the air, and it would also promote uh, rail throughout the state of Vermont and the United States. Absolutely, absolutely. We agree with each other. Once in a while we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we're down to about two minutes. Is there anything else you want to cover, Alex? Um, I think I just... Uh would really like to encourage uh, people to come be part of the story. You know, Charlie mentioned before this rail, hitty, uh, rail city history project that we're going to be announcing in the next couple of months. We're looking to interview uh, CVR veterans, family members, uh, railroad historians and enthusiasts to ask them to kind of help us talk about St. Albans as the rail city. You know, for those who don't know, there were 23 tracks uh, crossing Lake Street at that headquarters oh, building at one time. We're down to one. And uh, so um, it wasn't in the too distant past that that was a strong part of our community identity. So we're really um, starting to, to gear up that project so that we can invite community members to come in uh, and talk to us about that. And I guess the other thing I wanted to highlight is um, some of the great work we've done with schools besides like lessons. Um, we've done a couple pop-up museums where we've actually helped mm -hmm. students curate their own museum exhibits. We did this at Enosburg High School. We did this at St. Albans Town School. Uh, those are really enjoyable projects. Uh, we were fortunate to receive some funding from Rise Vermont this year to install some new children's spaces. So when you come into the museum now, if you're one of our youngest visitors, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, there will be special um, areas in the railroad room, in the women's realm, and in the agriculture room dedicated uh, to them. So there'll be age-appropriate books, activities, uh, coloring, games, and those sorts of things that really kind of help share our history with our youngest visitors. And that's something I'm really excited about. Well, we'd like to have you back in the future. Just give us an update so that way, you know, uh, we need to keep you in the limelight of the public, you know, that what you've done and what your, your future is. So, Alex, Charlie, we're down to about 29 seconds, so if I don't shut up, we'll never get off the show. <laughs> Thanks, Voters David. of the town of St. Albans, please vote for Article 8. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.